Good morning. A question. Is anything too hard for the Lord? Our reading today is from Jeremiah 32, verses 26 to 31. Then the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah, saying, Behold, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? Therefore, thus says the Lord, Behold, I will give this city into the hand of the Chaldeans, into the hand of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, and he shall take it. And the Chaldeans who fight against this city shall come and set fire to this city and burn it with the houses on whose roofs they have offered incense to Baal and poured out drink offerings to other gods to provoke me to anger. Because the children of Israel and the children of Judah have done only evil before me from their youth, for the children of Israel have provoked me only to anger with the work of their hands, says the Lord. For this city has been to me a provocation of my anger and my fury from the day that they built it even to this day. So I will remove it from before my face. The hardest thing for God is this stubbornness of his people. But even that's not too hard for the Lord. When we look at the kingdom of Judah, we can see a pretty hard case here. This is a very hard case. Very stubborn people off in their own corner doing their own stuff, oblivious. Although God sends his servants, uh, prophets, day and night to, to tell them to come to a better way. But they're just oblivious. They're kind of out partying, however which way it was for them compared to the way it was for us. Just think of it kind of translated from our day to theirs. In the face of God's power to save, his power to chasten, his power to heal, his power to, uh, to do any which thing he wants, and again and again by miracles he's done them, in the face of all that, the people, the people of Judah, have persisted in their apostasy, apostate behavior. Why? They knew what was right, but they departed from it further and further. But still he labors for them. He, he longs to bring them back to him in spite of their stubbornness. And you know, he's not going to override us for ourselves, but through the providence of suffering and his interaction with history, he'll bring us along to where we need to be, but we might find it's a pretty rough path to get there. We can think of this in terms of the question, how much do we want to resist him? How far would we really go? But remember, always remember, he pursues us relentlessly because he loves us relentlessly. Oh, why do we frustrate him? Let's pray together. Dear Father in heaven, please soften our hearts so that you can work in them. We're so prone to follow off our own crazy lines, our own things that are unuseful to you, that are awful. We harm ourselves and we do bad to ourselves for no reason. Lord, we know you won't force us, but we know you're trying to encourage us. And so we know we need encouraging. So Lord, with that thought in mind, uh, Lord, I give you permission to encourage me, to to push me harder, help, uh, to pull me more strongly toward the cross. Help me to draw closer to Jesus, Lord, not further away. Help me against my own willfulness, Lord. Please work in me so that I can be one of your agents. Lord, that's all I ask, and I ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, I pray God is working in your heart and mine today, and He, we see in the history how he worked for the kingdom of Judah even in their time of intense uh, departures from him. What were they thinking? And what have we been thinking? Let's go close to the Lord.